In just one week, Jews around the world will be celebrating one of the most important holidays on the Jewish calendar, Passover. On this week's Food Friday, we're back at Dining In in West Ashley for one of the most important rituals performed in the kitchen before the Passover meal can be prepared. And we're delighted to be here at Congregation Dor Tikva, and I am joined by Rabbi Shalom Mimran, and we're gonna be talking about Passover. And Passover is one of the holiest holidays on the Jewish calendar. Maybe you can explain to us why it is such a special holiday. Yeah, sure. A uh, pleasure to be here. So, in a nutshell, I would say Passover is, in a sense, uh, the birth of the Jewish nation. Uh, we were, you know, enslaved in Egypt for uh, hundreds of years, and then we got to go free. And, you know, through miracles and what we, what we read about in the Bible and the Torah, then uh, about the many miracles that happened then and the circumstances around our uh, birth as a nation, which uh, began by the exodus from Egypt. And we started with that, and then from then on we uh, headed out and received the Torah. So it's quite different from Hanukkah being the other very recognizable Jewish holiday. So, so how would you categorize those two holidays? Would you say that it is a much more solemn occasion? Yeah, in a sense. I mean, there's much more rituals, many more, that apply uh, to Passover than Hanukkah. Passover is our first Jewish holiday that we have, both in the cycle of the year and both in terms of uh, our Jewish history. It has its fun times, and we have our meals, we have our family celebrations, we enjoy, you know, sitting around the food and the family time and following the, the Seder, uh, which Jews around the world do. Uh, which is a very specified ritual. Well, it's certainly very uh, educational for us, uh, for those who do not celebrate Passover, but I'm glad that you mentioned food because that is why we're here and dining in as the only kosher catering company in the low country. Uh, it's a very busy time of year. And so I wanted to talk a bit about the food aspect of Passover. So uh, when we talk about uh, preparing the kitchen for preparing the food, there's a lot of steps that go along with it. Maybe you can take us through what that looks like. Yeah, sure. So generally, uh, Jewish food, uh, for those who keep, you know, halacha observant, then it's uh, a little more difficult than it would be for any person on the street to just be able to go into a supermarket and buy food uh, where we look for, you know, kosher certification, and then that's the food we can use. But on Passover, there's an extra stringency which is we have to make sure that the food doesn't have any uh, sources of leavened or bread or flour or anything which could, you know, uh, even potentially rise. And, and what are some of the foods that are typical of Passover? So you mentioned unleavened bread. Right, so an example of unleavened bread would be matzah. Now matzah is a uh, simple cracker in essence and it's literally just flour and water that's baked in a hurry. And one thing that we did learn uh, about a kosher kitchen is that it's not just one kitchen, it is at least two kitchens where f different foods are prepared separately. You have separate utensils and bowls and, and all kinds of things. But f when you're talking about Passover, there's that additional element as well. As the rabbi, you come in and what is your role? Right, so for Passover, when we're trying to get to that extra level of uh, you know, kosher for Passover status, so that's where we would want to uh, make sure that not only is it you know, separate meaty and dairy, but also that the, any traces of unleavened products are gone. So all of the biscuits, crackers, the cakes and cookies and bread, all of that and challah, all of that needs to be gone. And it's not just it has to be gone rid of, we've got to get totally clean up the kitchen to a status where even the taste of it is what it's called. The taste of it is gone. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what that process looks like. Shall we head into the kitchen? Let's go. Okay, let's go. And here we are in the kitchen, Marcy Rosenberg. Thank you so much for having us back. Sure. You're the founder of Dining In, the only kosher catering company here in the Low Country. And the last time we spoke, you were going to invite us back into your kitchen to talk about the importance of keeping kosher during Passover and how different it is from some of the other times of year. So can you tell us a little bit about what preparation you've done so far? So for the last three days, I've had, there's probably about four of us, five of us who have been working and um, moving all the uh, equipment that we use during the year um, away from everything else. And you can see the kitchen looks kind of bare. Um, and then we cleaned everything. So it has to look 
brand new. We had to take the ovens apart and the stove top and you clean every little bit. And then once we've um, finished cleaning, we can't use the kitchen for 24 hours. It has to sit for 24 hours and then it goes through the cost sharing process. It's really an incredible uh, procedure which is you know, the, what we call the cashering of the ovens, which starts with the cleaning and afterwards with the heating to the level that would remove even the taste of what may be uh, what we call chametz in the walls uh, of this oven. Some things, they can't be made kosher for Passover. So like this, areas where we usually hang all our pots and pans. And so we took all the pots and pans and put them away for Passover, as well as my mixer that I use to make challah every week. Again, we can't make it kosher for Passover. There's no way to get all the flour out. There's never a way to do that. So you have to cover it. Um, another example would be in the refrigerator where the shelves can't be made kosher. So we cover those as well. So we've already cleaned the refrigerator and covered all the shelving. Marcy, thank you so much for showing us around and thank you again, Rabbi Minram, for explaining to us why it needs to be so clean here for a Passover kitchen. I have to ask you this though, uh, are you taking any more orders for Passover at this point? So we are closed for taking orders for Seder, but we do always have extra food available and they can find that on my website. Well, fried chicken in the South, that's a pretty good audience yes. right here. <laughs> thank you again for having us at Dining In and thank you so much, Rabbi, and happy Passover to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. That's gonna do it for us on this edition of Food Friday. We'll see you again next week.